Okay. Um, let's start again now with the contributed talks. Uh, the first one is by uh, Zengping Gui. Uh, trace map on the Cairo Vile algebra. Thank you very much. Thanks for giving me uh, this opportunity to speak here. Um, this, uh, today's talk is based on a uh, paper on archive uh, with the same title. Um, today I will uh, introduce the notion of car homology, uh, known as uh, derived conform box, and I will explain the constructions uh, of trace map on Kyle Way algebras. Uh, so the space of conform box is one of the main objects in study uh, two-dimensional conform field theories. Uh, and today, I, I will uh, try to exp expand uh, the space uh, of derived conform box uh, in mathematical literature known as uh, Kyle homology. And the usual conform box or co-invariants uh, are the degree zero part. So there is a kind of sequence of uh, vector space. And here I, uh, I will briefly review a uh, recall notion of Kyle homology uh, introduced by Banks and Greenfield. So suppose, suppose that uh, the space of local, operated, lo, sorry, local operators in our two-dimensional conform field theory uh, can be described by a vertex algebra uh, with some uh, extra structure, say quasi-conformal. And one can uh, have a, a grouping uh, construction. We can construct a vertex algebra bundle over a smooth Riemann surface. And this bundle uh, is a left D module. Uh, or equivalent being is a holomorphic infinite dimensional vector bundle. In our case, it's a holomorphic infinite dimensional vector bundle with a holomorphic connection. And fiber-wise, um, it is the uh, vertex algebra uh, that we start with. Uh, from uh, left D module uh, of vertex algebra bundles, uh, we can get the right D module by tensing with the canonical line bundle of our Riemann surface. And uh, this right D module um, has a structure of uh, Kyle algebra structure. But uh, by thinking of this uh, Kyle algebra as a two dimensional uh, metamorphic version of um, of an associative algebra, Benz and Dreamfield construct a chain complex uh, as a two-dimensional Kyle version of a usual Hochschild chain complex for associative algebras and define and redefine the Kyle homology group uh, to be a homology of this chain complex. Um, uh, as expected by, uh, uh, in physics uh, by recent result, uh, of Nick Rosenbluh, there, there is no higher Kyle homology in the usual uh, rational WZW model. Uh, but uh, the following general question is still open. So suppose uh, we have a rational uh, vertex operator algebra, and we proceed uh, as, as, as I mentioned in previous slides, uh, we can get a Kyle algebra on a smooth curve. And uh, the question is that, is it true that all higher Kyle homology range for this uh, rational Kyle algebra? Beyond the rational theory, beyond the rational theory one encounters uh, infinite dimensionality of conform box. Um, for the simple example is the case of Kyle bosons, and also non-zero, uh, non-trivial, high-degree high high Kyle homology groups like uh, general symplectic bosons. So uh, today I will focus on uh, uh, sympathetic boson. So consider a holomorphic vector bundle uh, on Riemann surface X, uh, which is equipped with a sympathetic pairing to the canonical line bundle. Then the shift cohomology group of E has a minus one shifted sympathetic pairing by integration uh, along the Riemann surface. And uh, this minus one shift is pairing pairing induced a BV, a BV algebra structure on a polynomial algebra uh, on this vector space. So we consider uh, the Kyle-Lagrangian uh, Kyle theory uh, with this free Lagrangian, Lagrangian. 
And the algebra structure of uh, the quantum observables of this theory uh, is captured by Cauchy algebra associated to E. And fiber-wise, it, it is exactly the, the usual simplicity boson of this algebra. So it's expected that the formalism of chi homology is equivalent uh, to, uh, to, to the path integral in physics. And furthermore, if we take, uh, if our bundle comes from uh, a, a, a sympathetic vector bundle twist by a half spin structure, then the chi homology of uh, this chi algebra form a D module on modular space of bundles. Uh, which quantizes the, uh, the Gaiato Lagrangian inside Hitching modular space. Uh, this Lagrangian is studied by Gaiato, Hitching, um, Ginsburg, and Rosenblum. And here is uh, the main result of my talk. So uh, the previous pass integral can be made rigorously and explicitly uh, to a trace map from a Kyle chain complex to a BV algebra. And furthermore, this trace map uh, is a chain map, if we equip uh, this BV algebra uh, with, a, with its BV differential. And here, there are a few points I want to mention here. Uh, is that uh, from this computation, a car homology can be computed as a BV cohomology of, of this finite generated BV algebra, and it's concentrated in this special degree. So whenever we have, uh, whenever uh, our Homomorphic vector bundle admits a non-trivial homomorphic section. A chi homology, uh, we only have a higher, uh, higher non-trivial chi homology in non-zero degree. And uh, the same method applies to chi bosons and sympathetic bosons. Uh, fermions uh, have infinite dimensional chi homology group. And also, variation of energy torsion can be uh, expressed as trace maps of some current insertion. And it's also possible to generalize this uh, uh, formulation to nonlinear sympathetic bosons, uh, such as curve differential operators, and um, extend the weighting genus to high genus curve. Uh, thank you. Um, question. Where's the question? Here? So uh, how exactly would you extend the Witten genus to a higher genus curve? How yes, it's, um, yeah, it's kind of work in progress, and it's a globalization procedure. So uh, here, a car wheel algebra can, can be kind of uh, considered as a car differential operator on a fine plane, and there is a grouping procedure but there are some analysis in anomalies. It's kind of work in progress. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, thank uh, Ve again for the talk. Next contributed talk is Alessandro Giacchetto uh, on resurgent large radius and symptotics of intersection numbers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and thank you for the possibility to speak. Um, so before talking about large genus asymptotics of intersection numbers, uh, let me start with a, sim uh, with a, with a toy example. Um, so suppose I, I ask you to count um, the number of arrangements of M distinct objects into M distinct boxes. Um, and the possible answer to uh, this question is given by uh, the factorial, m factorial. Um, and uh, um, uh, a nice thing about this answer is that this is a, an exact answer, uh, but it's also recursive. So um, a possible way around this is to um, use Stirling's approximation formula, uh, which now has the advantage of being a, a closed form expression, uh, but it's only asymptotically exact. Um, and you can even improve this answer um, uh, with some subleading corrections to, to the formula. Uh, and so in a sense, these two uh, answer, they, uh, they kind of complement each other. Um, and 
Uh, another situation that is similar to this, but much more complicated, is the one of um, intersection numbers on the moduli of curves. Um, so for today, we'll just focus on um, uh, psi class intersection numbers. So the only thing that you have to know about this is that these are uh, interesting numbers that appear uh, both in physics and math. Um, and they are param parameterized by uh, an n-tuple of, of integers, d1 up to dn, that they, and, and they sum up to 3g minus 3 plus n. Um, and so a solution to the problem of computing such numbers uh, was uh, conjectured by Witten um, and proved by Konsevich in the early 90s. Um, so the, form the recursive formula is this one. Uh, you don't have to understand anything about this formula except for the fact that it's, uh, it's a recursive formula. Um, and it's recursive in, uh, um, in 2G, minus, uh, 2G minus 2 plus n, the Euler characteristic um, of the surfaces uh, parameterized by these numbers. Um, and I should also say that this is just a, um, a rephrasing of the Virasoro constraints for this problem. So in a sense, this is a, this is a kind of uh, the analog of uh, the, the recursive definition of factorials. So a natural question would be what about the um, asymptotic formula for these numbers? Um, and today I will just focus on the large genus asymptotic formula. Um, and the answer is, is, is given uh, here. So it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a closed form expression. Um, it's not recursive and uh, um, it has three building blocks. There's a constant term, this two to the n over four pi, um, a factorial term, gamma of two g minus two plus n, um, and a power low, this two third to the two g minus two plus n. Um, and uh, um, the proof of this formula was given by Agarwal in 2020, and a second proof came in 2021. And in both cases, the solution, uh, the, the proof of this formula is a combinatorial uh, analysis of Virasoro constraints by Agarwal and the determinantal formula by Guo and Yang. Um, and the question that I want to address today is, well, first of all, is there a, a universal strategy to attack these sort of problems? Um, and the reason is that, uh, well, here I'm just focusing on psi class intersection numbers, um, but there are many more problems that have the same kind of structure for which the large genus asymptotics is not known. Uh, think about uh, Val Peterson volumes, for example. Um, a second question is what about the geometric meaning of, of this formula? So for example, here you see this two third, uh, where does it come from? Um, and the third uh, question is what about the subleading corrections to this formula? Um, and so the answers uh, we gave to these questions are the following. Um, everything essentially boils down to the strategy we implemented to attack this problem, which is a combination of resurgence uh, and the determinantal formula. And the geometric meaning of all, these, all the ingredients appearing here uh, is, well, for psi class intersection numbers, is, uh, is given by uh, these airy functions, uh, which appear in this specific uh, case uh, as essentially the quantization of the underlying spectral curve. Um, and with this strategy, we're also able to um, uh, say something about the uh, sublating corrections. And so the answer, uh, I, I like to present it in this way. So uh, I like to think of this formula as a kind of universal formula with some model dependent ingredients. And for psi class intersection numbers, uh, these are uh, this global constant S, which is equal to one in this case, but its geometric meaning is that it's, it's the Stokes constant underlying the airy differential equation. Um, this A equal to third is just um, the constant multiplying um, one over H bar in the uh, asymptotic of uh, the airy functions. Um, and lastly, these uh, subleading terms, uh, they are computable. Um, they're very complicated, so here is the first one, but uh, with, our, uh, with our strategy, we're able to say something about them. Um, so in the remaining part, I just want to say something about the strategy. Um, uh, the first thing is about resurgence, and the idea, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, imagine you start with a, with a divergent series, phi tilde, and suppose that after Borel transform, uh, you only have uh, finitely many log singularities which means that you have a log multiplying a holomorphic term that I like to write as a, as a Stokes constant times a holomorphic term that you can tailor expand. And once you know all these ingredients, you can just write down uh, explicitly the asymptotic for the, the coefficients of the initial series. Uh, so you can see here, it's a, it's a very explicit uh, asymptotics given in terms of all these ingredients here. Um, so the upshot is that uh, as long as you know the, this Borel plane singularity structure, you can extract the large genus asymptotic, the, the large order of asymptotics. 
And the reason why this is, uh, this is uh, relevant is that, uh, first of all, we have a, a nice source of um, Borel plane singularity structure, uh, which is this exponential integrals. Uh, and the second fact is that Borel plane singularities, they behave well under sums and products. Um, and uh, uh, we, we implemented this strategy for uh, psi classes intersection numbers in, the, in this way. Um, so first of all, uh, you can take the generating series of these intersection numbers uh, when n is fixed. So this is uh, the endpoint function. And there's a formula that uh, gives you this endpoint function in terms of um, uh, a sum over permutations of the symmetric group uh, involving Airy and Berry functions. So he, th this formula is kind of complicated, but uh, it's, it's just a sum uh, and it's a sum and products of Airy and Berry functions. Um, and the upshot is that because we know everything about Airy and Berry and everything behaves well under sums and products, we are able to understand the singularity structure of this endpoint function. So here are all the data that you essentially need to just write down the uh, large genus asymptotics of the coefficients of this series here. Um, and well, this was just one example. Uh, the main point of this strategy is that it applies to many more um, examples that have the same structure. So just to mention one, this is uh, Norbury's intersection numbers that are relevant in superval peterson volumes, or JT. Um, and the, the formula is exactly the same. The only thing that changes are some model-dependent uh, ingredients like the Stokes constants and the instant connections uh, that in this case are the ones associated to the quantum curve for this problem, which is the Bessel ODE. Um, and this also applies to a much more complicated example, like uh, within our spin intersection numbers, uh, where again, I mean, the, the, the formula is much more complicated, but it has the same structure with, uh, with some model dependent ingredients that are related to this R airy ODE. Um, thank you very much. My microphone is coming. <clears throat> also, this uh, local Calabi-Aus can be um, <clears throat> um, solved by these topological recursions. Uh, is, there, uh, is, is there progress on, or uh, from this point of view, is there progress on uh, getting the asymptotics, uh, let's say, for local P2 or something? Yeah, so uh, no, and the, the main reason is that I don't know if there's a determinantal formula for uh, that specific problem. If there is, in principle, one can try to uh, attack it using this strategy. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. For sure, there are some determinantal formula for Gramm-Witten theory of P1, but I don't know about Calabi-L threefolds. Local P1? Uh, I think just, uh, no, I think uh, just maybe, uh, um, P1 with um, um, uh, point insertions, I think. I'm, I'm, but I'm not sure. Something like this. Thanks. Nice talk. Uh, so related, perhaps, to the previous question. So the Calabia y squared equals to x plus deformation plus a uv equals zero there is a local description of the same model you're describing. In that context, uh, the topological string has deformation, the Nekrasov uh, de deformation. So there are two parameters. The limit that uh, corresponds to the wave function you wrote down is nekrasov shadashvili limit, where you get this wave function solving this. First of all, do you understand why, you're, why you should be in the nekrasov shadashvili limit to describe these, these intersections? And secondly, what if you talk about the other parameter and how does it show up in your calculations? Um, yeah, to be honest, I have no idea. Uh, I don't know exactly, no. So, so to run your argument, do you need this um, a topological recursion, or is it enough to know that you have quantum curve, which annihilates? Uh, so you need two ingredients. You need a determinantal formula, uh, which in many cases is a consequence of topological recursion, uh, or it's a consequence of integrability. Um, and the second ingredient is, is the quantum curve. So uh, you need both. And about the quantum curve, you need to know enough about the... Um, Borel plane singularity structure of the solution. That's, that's all you need to know. Okay, uh, then let's thank the speaker again for the next talk.
And next, we have Veronica Fantini, who will talk about uh, modular research and structures and spectral traces of local P2. Thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, I will discuss uh, part of a joint project with uh, Claudia Rella. So to begin with, let me remind that the theory of resurgence is very useful uh, in order to study perturbative expansion because it al co allows to compute non-perturbative sub-leading order contribution. And indeed, it has been extensively used uh, also in topological string uh, due to the work of many people also present here today. But sometimes it is interesting to study the resurgence structure of an asymptotic expansion of a given analytic function. Because in that case, it might happen that the resurgence structure knows more about the structure of the function. And that is the case, for instance, of the first fermionic spectral trace of local P2. Because as I studied in the joint work with Claudia, we proved that the generating function of the Stokes constant are holomorphic quantum modular forms. And even more generally, we introduced the notion of modular resurgence structure that uh, are conjecturally um, supposed to encode holomorphic, uh, describe holomorphic quantum modular forms. So the first fermionic spectral trace uh, we consider are the one that arises in the context of the topological string spectral theory correspondence of Gracia Tsudamarino, where a quantum mechanical operator is constructed by quantizing, oh sorry. Ah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> too, too fast. Uh, it's uh, constructed by uh, quantizing the mirror curve of a local uh, Calabiao trifold, such as uh, local P2. And then uh, the fermionic traces uh, are the coefficient in the expansion at the orbifold point of the spectral determinant on the inverse operator. For instance, in the case of local P2, that's uh, uh, how the first fermionic spectral trace look like, in which you see the holomorphic and anti-holomorphic block given in terms of cupocamer symbol. Now, in her work, Claudia studied the resurgence structure of the asymptotic expansion of the logarithm of the first fermionic spectral trace in both the strong and weak coupling regime, meaning uh, uh, in the limit as h bar goes to zero or infinity, and in this example, the um, resurgence structure is very simple, but at the same time rich. Because first of all, the singularity in the Borel plane are organized in a single tower. The Stokes constant are known exactly. And in particular, they are the coefficient of uh, this 2L function. So you, already at this stage, you can see that the L function have uh, some sort of symmetries which is even more explicit and encoded in the functional equation, which describes the analytic continuation of the 2L function. And uh, thanks to this very nice structure, we um, then consider and study the modularity property of the generating function of the Stokes constant. So in particular, our main result is to show that these are holomorphic quantum modular form for the group gamma 1,3. And here, the modular parameter y is in fact related to the uh, h-bar constant. Moreover, that also considering the freak involution, you get other two holomorphic uh, uh, quantum modular form where the role of the co-cycle is exchanged. And uh, let me uh, remind that the group gamma 1,3 is uh, um, deeply connected with the geometry of the problem, so of local P2. Now, Taking this uh, as a motivating example, we introduce uh, uh, the notion of modular resurgence structure, which in a sense uh, represent uh, uh, and encode the one that I briefly described uh, in the example of local P2. So by modular resurgence structure, we mean uh, that the singularity in the Borel plane are organized in a single tower, that at each singularity, the resurgence series uh, is given simply by the Stokes constant, but these Sox constant uh, uh, are coefficient of an L function, which admit meromorphic analytic continuation. And uh, conjecturally, if a Q-series has an asymptotic expansion with this uh, uh, modular resurgence structure, then uh, it's supposed to be an holomorphic quantum modular form for some subgroup of SL2Z. So 
the message is really that this modular resurgence structure conjecturally should give rise to holomorphic quantum modular forms. And uh, to conclude, uh, let me uh, give a, a general overview of other results that uh, we studied in the paper with Claudia. So once more, let me stress that uh, as uh, evidence of this uh, modular resurgent conjecture, the uh, asymptotic expansion of the logarithm of the first fermionic spectral trace of local P2 in both regime give rise to holomorphic quantum modular forms uh, in the sense that the generating function of the Stokes constant are holomorphic quantum modular form. Moreover, that the L function play a very interesting role uh, in, to describe the following feature. So on one hand, that a strong, weak resurgence symmetry is uh, uh, at a play, and in fact, uh, it is responsible of uh, um, describing how non-perturbative and perturbative contribution in both the strong weak coupling regime are related to each other. And moreover, we introduce a new paradigm of resurgence where new series resurge as dictated by the functional equation. As another evidence for our conjecture, we also consider examples that arise in the theory of mass cusp form. And uh, finally, um, one, other, uh, one of the other interesting questions that we can uh, ask uh, when we study asymptotic series is what are their summability property? And uh, in the example of local P2, we can prove that the generating function of the Stokes constant in the weak coupling regime can be reconstructed taking the median resummation of its asymptotic expansion. And uh, the same result is conjectured for the generating function in the strong coupling regime. And more generally, we also expect that this result will hold every time we have a, a modular resurgence structure. So I will uh, stop here. Thank you for your attention. And uh, if there are any questions. Two questions. Thank you for the talk. I mean, <clears throat> in this work of uh, <clears throat> Marcos and Jigu, they have found that the Stokes constants are related to BPS states on the local P2. Is that, and uh, now you have a complete series of these Stokes constants. Have you an interpretation of those in this, along these lines? We would like to, yeah, this, we are trying to uh, investigate it further. It's true that conjecturally that's the expectation, so that's with what we would like to, to prove, but uh, so far, uh, we still don't have the exact uh, uh, result. Thank you. Thanks for a nice talk. Do you have any interpretation of the modular resurgence structures in M theory or string theory in any form? What is the interpretation of these? Oh, sorry, of what? Uh, of this? Embedding these questions into M theory or string theory and what they mean. I mean, through the uh, topological um, uh, string uh, spectral theory correspondence, uh, the Stokes constant should be related, in fact, with uh, uh, the BPS uh, um, state, as also Albrecht was uh, saying. And, uh, but so far, I mean, it's purely conjectural, and we don't have yet... Uh, but you have a lot of structure that you have, like these, uh, these forms of the functions that appear. Do you have an interpretation of their form without... In other words, can you interpret your results in a different in language in, inside string theory? Uh, I think through the, this conjecture, yes, but, uh, but so far we still don't have the, uh, the exact uh, way to translate. In fact, there is maybe one thing that I can comment, is that even uh, um, looking at the free energy in the, for the topological string uh, point of view, these are known to be quasi-modular forms for the same group. However, the uh, parameter here for the modularity is the parameter in the moduli space of the, that parameterizes the complex structure of the mirror. So it seems that there is uh, some, uh, in a sense, common uh, structure, and maybe that's the way, that will be our approach to try to understand it. But uh, yeah, we are working on that. Thank you. Um, my question concerns just to be uh, your opinion about uh, the this statement okay this asymptotic expansion do you think that they have any prospects in dealing with uh, uv divergence for 
I'm sorry, I don't know okay. this. Okay, so let's thank uh, Veronica again. Thank you. And, uh, Okay, next speaker is uh, Maximiliano Ferro, who will talk about correlators in the ABJM line defects from string worksheet on ADS4 cross CP3. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, thanks uh, to the organizer for this opportunity. I will talk about uh, correlators on line defects in a ABJ or ABJM theory from the string worksheet on ADS4 times CP3. And in particular, I will focus on the role of the Karaman field. This uh, is a work with a collaboration with my advisor, uh, Diego Correa, and uh, Victor Giraldo Rivera, both uh, from the Instituto de Física La Plata at uh, Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina. Uh, okay, um, uh, let's uh, put some context uh, for this work. Um, the ABJ or ABJM uh, model is an N equal six. Um, super Chern Simon gate theory with matter, uh, which gate group is a an, an product of U, UN uh, gauge groups. Uh, at a large end limit, uh, uh, this model uh, can be considered as a description of M theory on ADS4 uh, time and uh, seven dimensional sphere uh, quotient by a discourse group. Uh, but in the, the half limit, um, the, the geometry uh, collapsed to ADS4 times CP3, and uh, there is a uh, type 2A string theory description. Uh, when the, the ranks of the gauge group are different, um, we must uh, need include a uh, non-vanishing uh, Karamon uh, configuration around the CP1 uh, geometry between the CP3. Um, this uh, flat uh, configuration coupled with the uh, end point of the uh, open string, and this is uh, the, key point, uh, the key point of this work. Um, okay, let's talk about uh, Wilson line as a um, one-dimensional uh, defect CFT. Uh, as we, you know, the Wilson uh, operators are a non-local operator uh, defined along uh, some uh, curve, in particular, uh, when consider lines, uh, this curve are, uh, is open. Uh, the, uh, in generally, uh, this operator uh, partially breaks uh, the, the symmetries of the field theory, but uh, for superconformal field theories, uh, you can consider uh, some operator uh, which preserve some amount of the uh, supersymmetries. For example, in ABJM model, you can consider the one over six BPS which preserve uh, four of the original supercharges are uh, it, this this operator is uh, given by uh, this um, uh, this uh, super connection um, okay uh, this uh, these uh, lines okay, uh, uh, you you can consider this line as a, a, a theory uh, in the sense uh, you, you can consider the, uh, the, the endpoint functions along this line, and uh, in, in some cases, um, uh, this given an conformal field theory, and the, the correlators are constrained uh, f uh, from the conformal invariance. Uh, from the holographic point of view, the uh, Wilson uh, operators are realized um, by the open string uh, worksheet, um, which coincide in the in the boundary of ADS with the counter of the uh, Wilson uh, loop or, or Wilson line, uh, but different Wilson uh, operator can be realized, uh, but uh, take different uh, boundary conditions in the uh, compact uh, dimensions. For example, for the one over six uh, BPS. Uh, Wilson uh, line, you need to uh, put uh, Neumann boundary conditions in uh, uh, CP1 um, geometry. Okay, 
uh, uh, now uh, you can consider fluctuations around the classical solution and for the for the Wilson line uh, the uh, the classic geometry uh, induced in the worksheet is an ADS2 and you can consider the flu the, the bosonic fluctuations uh, and uh, you, you need to consider the boundary, uh, the boundary behavior of the, uh, on, uh, of the fields. Um, for example, for the massless scalar field, you, uh, you have uh, different possibilities for the, the boundary behavior. Uh, you, you can uh, consider Dirichlet or Neumann uh, or uh, some mixed boundary condition. Uh, uh, the, the, the point of this work is the, the Karaman field induced unmixed boundary condition uh, for uh, the fluctuations around the CP1 direction. Um, you, you, you can uh, write the, the quadratic and the quartic action uh, for this problem, uh, for, for the fluctuations, uh, and uh, we need to uh, put an uh, extra term for the, the impose the Neumann uh, boundary condition for the, the, the string worksheet and couple with the uh, Karamon field. The, uh, the point is the, the Karamon uh, coupled with the, uh, the, the string as a boundary term. Uh, okay, uh, you, you can externalize this action and obtain the, uh, the classical green problem with a particular uh, a, a particular boundary condition, and uh, uh, we uh, resolve this problem and obtain the uh, green functions. The, the green functions uh, are um, contain a, a term uh, symmetric and other terms anti-symmetric in the in the worksheet coordinate. And later you you need. A, um, take the mean value around the uh, directions of the CP1 because the strings are deslocalized uh, on the uh, CP1 geometry. Um, uh, for, the, uh, for the test, uh, to, to test the, the conformal invariance uh, of uh, this defect, uh, we calculate the four-point functions uh, at uh, Lee in order. This is the result, but the question is uh, uh, to next uh, Next to Lee in order, this is a, a, a hard problem, but uh, we consider the derivatives of uh, this uh, four-point function, and uh, uh, we can uh, extract the the, uh, the cross-ratio function uh, in explicit way, um, reveal an uh, conformal invariant in non-trivial ways because the, uh, there are several uh, anomalous terms. Uh, but uh, these terms uh, are cancelled be, uh, between between them. Uh, this this expression is uh, uh, cro uh, crossing symmetry manifestly. Um, and okay, uh, this is all. More details uh, you, uh, for more detail you can uh, see uh, our publication. Uh, we we provide some evidence about the the conformal invariance of the. Uh, one uh, over six BPS Wilson line in ABJ theory from the string worship per, uh, perspective, uh, and the the next step is try to do uh, analytic bootstrap uh, to calculate these uh, these uh, correlators. And other open problem is uh, include fermionic and uh, calculate explicitly uh, the one loop uh, within the arms uh, uh, to to. A more precise uh, result. Okay, it, it is all. Uh, thanks again and ask me. That's a question. Uh, when you say ADS2 CFT1 correspondence in this case, do you Exactly mean conformal quantum mechanics, or is a nearly CFT? No, no, it's a, it's a kind of a conformal quantum mechanics. But you you don't know the the explicit Hamiltonian of the the problem. You you know the symmetries along the line. I see. So it's not like the SYK stuff. No, no, no. I see. Okay, thanks.
Okay. Then uh, uh, let's thank the speaker again for the nice talk. And we continue with the ideal Majtara on the partition function of Algiers Douglas theories on the blow up. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for uh, this opportunity to talk. Then uh, we start uh, from uh, the supersymmetric uh, gauge theory in four dimension. We know with n equal to supersymmetry, uh, the low energy theory is fixed by the geometry of the cyber witten curve. And uh, we are interested in particular uh, kind of theories, the Algerian Douglas theories, uh, which are uh, some strongly coupled and isolated uh, superconformal field theories, uh, which appear as singularities of the Coulomb bench. And uh, they ca their characteristic is, uh, is uh, that they have mutually no local degrees of freedom. And so they don't have a Lagrangian description and we need uh, different tools to study them. And uh, uh, one possibility is to use the theory of integrable system. And as an example, we will focus on the simplest Algebra Douglas theory that is the H0 theory. And uh, so the saber witten curve is associated to an integrable system because it's the spectral curve of the integrable system. And uh, if we introduce now a self-dual omega background, then uh, this system acquires uh, a time dependence. And in the case of uh, rank one theories, uh, is given by the Pineda equations. So we have uh, uh, the so-called Pineda gauge correspondence that give a map within the integrable system and uh, the gauge theory. And the time is the coupling scale, uh, the Hamiltonian corresponds to the Coulomb parameters. And uh, in uh, the cyber uh, the cyber theory is obtained in the limit in which we remove the omega background. So here there is a classification diagram of Pineda equation, and one can see that uh, there are some limits to reach uh, uh, to pass from one equation to the other, and this corresponds to the RG flow of the gauge theory. And uh, now we are interested in in uh, the considering the theory on the so-called blow-up, the geometry of this blow-up is uh, in the picture. The idea is that we remove the origin and we replace it uh, with the, uh, a sphere, the exceptional divisor. And on this sphere, we put some surface operator, which gives some magnetic flux measured by S. Then we can define uh, the so-called blow-up factor, that is the ratio between this uh, blow-up partition function and the one without insertion. And uh, this, uh, we will see that this nicely map uh, in the... Um, uh, integrable system because it's the tau function of the integrable system that directly encodes from the gauge theory point of view information about the partition function of the gauge theory. And now, first of all, in the cyber witten limit, uh, we have uh, that the, this blow factor has a universal structure because it's always given by the so-called Weierstrass sigma function that is a elliptic uh, function that uh, depends on two parameters, G2 and G3, that are given by the Weierstrass parameterization of the cyber witten curve, that is, this cubic uh, uh, parameterization. And this result is related to the integrable system because uh, sigma uh, is the tau function of the integrable system, the autonomous one. Uh, and more, this has also a geometrical meaning uh, because uh, from donaldson witten theory, uh, the previous result can be interpreted as saying that the generating function of Donaldson uh, polynomials uh, on the blow-up manifold is related to the one uh, on the blow-down manifold uh, with a universal factor that is this blow-up uh, uh, factor, that is the sigma, the sigma function. And if we introduce an omega background, then the Donaldson invariant become equivariant, Donaldson invariant. And we have a generalization of this formula where the sigma function is replaced by the pine tau function. And this can be seen using the so-called nakajima shock blow-up relations. Now, this sigma has uh, uh, this uh, expansion. That, uh, and uh, which is in terms of polynomial uh, G2 and, uh, and, uh, and G3. Uh, this can be interpreted physically because uh, uh, is a realization of the operator state correspondence for this uh, blow-up state, in which we can uh, rewrite it as a sum of local operators of the chiral ring that is generated by U. And the same logic applies in the omega background. So also for the blow factor in the omega background, we, have, we expect uh, a structure of this kind. And uh, so the question is now how to fix this uh, coefficients of the expansion. And uh, this can be done using the integrable system because 
uh, it turned out that uh, this uh, uh, expansion, from the point of view of the integrable system, is uh, an expansion around the zero of the top function. So, uh, using uh, plugging uh, this kind of answers in the Pileve equation, one can fix recursively all the coefficients. And in the case of the H0 theory, we obtain uh, this uh, uh, relation here, and uh, we have uh, a recursion relation, and we can see that the polynomial have integer coefficients. And uh, this actually, in the case of sigma, is proved, uh, can be proved, for example, from the theory of Schur polynomials. In the case of tau, we check this to very high order, but we don't have a proof, uh, so we conjecture that they are lower integer, and physically, we expect to be, uh, they to be related to the counting of BPS states. And uh, f f uh, most, uh, and the other uh, important property is the modularity. We have that this, uh, Blow factor is a holomorphic function of u, but this has also an interpretation in terms of the topological string theory because this tau function can be interpreted as a non-perturbative completion of topological, uh, the perturbative topological string partition function, which arises as a kind of resurgence of it. And uh, then one can see that uh, this uh, modularity property uh, of tau directly uh, implies the holomorphic anomaly equations. So uh, it is, uh, there is a clear connection with the, the topological string. And okay, so let me conclude. Uh, I said uh, uh, this blah uh, factor was studied in a particular limit, this self-dual background that actually is related to, uh, so is a particular um, omega background. One can ask what happens in general. And uh, the answer is that uh, the um, integrable system becomes a quantum integrable system. So we have to quantize the Pendleby equation, and this will give the natural answer, let's say, for the blow factor in this case. Uh, this has uh, a geometrical uh, interpretation as uh, equivariant donation invariance. And uh, let me say that in the cyber witten limit, uh, actually, this uh, blow factor can be computed in terms of. Uh, um, of the so-called Euclidean integral using the low energy effective theory. Uh, but uh, it will be interesting to compute also uh, this one that arises from the integrable system uh, in terms of a quantum version of this Euclidean integral where now is, uh, we have also this omega background. And uh, finally, uh, this modularity property may help uh, also to fix uh, the holomorphic ambiguity uh, for the topological string, but this uh, we don't know, and uh, that's all, and thank you for your attention. So have you tried to write down the topological um, correlation functions of surface operators for compact toric manifolds? Uh, it is in the program, but for the moment uh, we, we do, didn't try because uh, we first uh, did this check. Uh, so, but uh, it's an interesting question. Yes. Yes. This is working. So I guess you, then you know. So, um, so Yuri Nadayev and I wrote down using use you you plane techniques to round, write down the partition functions of the surface operators, the point operators that actually turn out to vanish. <laughs> But for the surface operators on, well, we claimed it for arbitrary compact four manifolds. Your techniques should apply to the toric case. It would be very interesting to confirm or deny our results. Yes, uh, we have to check this, uh, the, the relation with the topological string for now. Further questions? Oh, yes. Can you say more about what is a quantum U plane integral? Okay. Uh, yeah, and this is an uh, interesting uh, question. Uh, okay, let me first uh, say. Uh, about the U-plane integral. In, in this case, uh, uh, the idea is we just write the effective Lagrangian that we know, the infrared Lagrangian that we know from the cyber witten theory. And then we can explicitly compute uh, uh, the partition function 
because uh, using the, the topology, because this quantity is topological, we can decouple essentially all the, the dynamical degrees of freedom and we reduce some, uh, to some uh, path integral over zero mode, essentially. Uh, in this case, in the case of the quantum mu plane integral, uh, we expect to do the same, but uh, now uh, not we have uh, to do an equivariant version of this construction. So, so the um, supercharges uh, that are, uh, we use uh, in the Seberwitten uh, case must be deformed with this parameter. We have some uh, equivariant uh, uh, version of them, essentially the one that. Uh, were used uh, by Necrosoft uh, in uh, computing its, uh, its partition function in, in terms of instant on corrections. And um, so uh, the, more or less the construction will be like this, but uh, the details uh, we, for the moment we don't know. But it is very, a very interesting uh, problem, we think. Any other question? Okay, then we can thank Ideal again. <laughs> Excellent timing. So now lunch is served on the, uh, in the cafeteria, not outside because it's raining, which is uh, on the uh, same floor of the terrace. And we will reconvene here at 2 o'clock. <laughs>